think the slides are in front of me. So we have identical slides. So sorry about the pillar. We will try. Uh, so I'll present from here. So it's a bit easy for everyone. Good morning. My name is uh, Kumar. Uh, so today's meeting is an informal purchaser meeting uh, for the mark. Uh, this is the disclaimer. Basically, these slides, uh, whatever is presented here, is purely for the purchaser's information only. It's not for public circulation. It's not a top document. So it's just to give you information. Information in these slides are based on public information, based on our checking, interview with the directors, books and records in our hand, negotiation with consultants. This is how we come in. So if there's any variation, uh, we just want to make sure that uh, these are not final. All right? These are the disclaimers. Yeah, I'll skip the disclaimers. Okay, today, uh, what we intend to do is we run through nine headers, background of the projects, action taken by the receivers and managers, communication with the purchasers, our proposed contractor, cost to complete, uh, salient terms, the main key terms in the scheme, uh, how we intend to do the scheme, our past experience, moving forward, and corporate profile of the proposed contractor. These are the headers. All right. So the project is located in Bukit Saga. Uh, based on our review, it is approximately 70 to 80 percent structurally completed. Uh, Mr. Andrew Hing and Dr. Hing King has been appointed as receiver and manager by the uh, by the bank UOB on 25th September 2018. This is when we got appointed. Uh, UOB Bank holds a fixed and float charge over BHL Gabila, gives them an absolute rights over all the assets of BHL Gabila, including the mark. The project development comprises the following layouts. You have block A of 189 units of apartments, which is 21 floors. Block B, 278 units of apartments, which has 23 floors. Then you have one block of podium with 10 floors. Uh, basically, these are 18 units of retail space, one and two. 36 units of offices, three and four. One unit, this is under the development order, one unit of MPAJ library, level 2 P1, car parks for motorcycle and cars, one, four, five, and eight, semi-underground car park, one and two, and underground car park at UG1, UG2. This is the approved development plan for the month. Uh, this is the pictures taken by us when we took control of the site. The site is now uh, insured by us uh, as the receivers. Uh, so the insurance coverage for fire, peril, burglary, everything is intact. That's by us. Uh, also, uh, the guards are under us, so entries are not allowed randomly. So we control the site as of now. This is how it did look like when we took control. So you see, uh, there are also rooms where the sanitary fittings, they have purchased a lot of it. Sanitary fittings, uh, table chairs, sofas. So they have a couple of rooms where they have inventory stocked in. Uh. So all this we have sealed up. No movement of all this. Okay. Action is by the RNM as of today. Um, on 21st September 2018, we have served our notice of appointment. Uh, with this being done, the director's powers have ceased. They cannot enter into any contract, they cannot deal with the assets of BHL Gamila as effective of 21st September 2018. Immediately, uh, we had a meeting with the Ministry of Housing, uh, letting them know that we have taken control of the site and then asking for information regarding this project, including uh, developer's license, advertisement license, and everything. Uh, just to fast track a bit, we have presented exactly what you see here to the Ministry of Housing. Uh, project of Makalai site to the Punara last week. So they are fully aware of the contents of this site. Uh, we also have done the purchaser due diligence. I will show you details. We also have meetings with the existing consultants of the project. Uh, numerous meetings have been done. Is to find out how much is owed to them, how much more balance of work, uh, and the most important thing, how much more they're going to charge us to finish off the rest of the work. Then we carried out an EOI exercise. An EOI exercise, for just for information, is a tender process, public tender process conducted by receivers and managers under the Companies Act, where we prepare a booklet, we advertise in three major newspapers, we invite people to come in and give them access to information and come back with their cost 
to complete. This was carried out. We evaluated the final offers submitted by the shortlisted contractors. All these details are given. And finally, an award conditional letter of offer was awarded on 12 June. This is a conditional offer. Why we gave that fast? Uh, we needed them to do groundwork. Start talking to the authorities, start talking to the consultants, find out the drawings and everything. But this is a conditional letter of offer. If the scheme doesn't proceed, the offer is not required. That's what happened because it's all contingent on the scheme. Communication with the purchasers. Um, we want to repeat this again. Uh, as of today, we are about touching 65% of purchasers who have come forward and given us this. So we've written a couple of times. Now it's good, there's a task force. Maybe all the information can be collected together. So we will issue one. Receipts, loan statement, proof of payment, very important. Latest progress building by architect, uh, buildings and architect certificate. SNP, a copy of the SNP. Number four is a letter of authorization. Uh, for the receivers to speak to your end financiers. The reason why we need to do this is to calculate how much they are dispersed and how much more balance to be dispersed. Uh, relevant features of the loan financing agreement. Full list of furnishing provided by the purchasers. Uh, this is uh, where each of your, based on our review, some SPAs has finishing, uh, furnishings. Some SPAs don't have furnishings, but they have a letter from the company saying that I'm giving you the furnishings. So, we are going to deem that this thing is part of the SPA. Uh, so we'll, that's why we went and asked all these details. Registration form, offer the purchase. Uh, if you have not received any of these circulars, our information came from the company records that we have taken control. Uh, it may not be accurate. Some of the address may change in both places. So if you have not received any one of it, today the form that Mr. Andrew said, uh, if you fill up, we can update your details, phone number, email. We can give you this one. So first, Circular issue, 16 October, notify appointment, asking for all the information which I asked you, I explained to you before. It's 22nd uh, November, status of the rehab, what are we doing right now? 5th March, we notify all the purchases regarding this tender, public tender which went on. 5th April, we updated on the outcome and requested information which I explained earlier. 20th June, uh, it's a circular which was sent out inviting everyone for this meeting. In addition to this, uh, there was also informal meeting done on 22nd November and 27th uh, May with the uh, de facto committee or people who have come forward to us, I think it's about 30 people who came and saw us. We quickly ran through this line to just have a feeler. So that is an informal one. So this, if you have not received anyone of it, just let us know. We will be more than happy to forward all this back to you. Okay, this are the detail of the purchase uh, units which are available and units which has been sold and unsold unit. For block A, there's 189. Block B, 278. Offices, this A and B, 189 and 278 are residential only. Offices is 36. Shop lots is 80. Total units includes residential, offices, shop lot is 521. Out of this, unsold unit A, Residential for block A, 31 for block B, offices is 16, shop block is 1. We have 56 units which are unsold as of today. This is purely based on our review and based on information that you have come forward with. So purchases who have come forward in total uh, and you have given us satisfactory information that you are the owner, proof of payment. We confirm that 99 for block A has reverted, block B is 174, offices 14. Shop lot 17, total 304. 65% of the sold units we are holding there. Purchases who have not reverted, uh, this is your total. 82, 73, 6, 161. It's about 35%. Who has not come forward? So, I mean, this meeting is good. We are, whoever is not, has not come forward, get in touch with us because when the court convene meeting happens, we need to verify ownership. The formal meeting is very important for us to establish the real owners behind it. Okay? Expression interest exercise. This was done on 11 February 2019. This is the tender process. Uh, potential in contractors for the proposed construction and completion of uncompleted works. Uh, Commence on 11 February. We completed after a month, 11 March. Out of uh, this tender, 12 parties came and saw who bought our tender docs, and 5 came on board. 
where a proper documentation was submitted um, telling about their interest to be a contractor to revive this. Parties who came in, Conway Constructions in Nebraha, Perkons in Nebraha, UCA Groups in Nebraha, Tagas Maloos in Nebraha, I Gateway Communication. So, uh, one of the prerequisites of the tender is not only to finish the project, for them to show us they have obtained or secured some form of financing from the bank. Because we don't want them to get stuck. So these people, uh, one of the CP, for them to come in, they must show us a letter of offer or the bank issues them a letter saying that we are willing to fund you for the project. So this was done. Okay, offers received. We shortlisted three people which managed to meet our basic requirements which is the, they can complete the project and plus they have secured financing from bankers. So offers on the tender, Conley, Percon, Tagas Manu, I Gateway and you say this is the value of the first tender exercise. Uh, after doing a duty on their offers with the consultants involved, we realized for instance Percon, Percon is the main one, they did not put in the ID cost, that's one. They also, uh, the m &E figures were not as per what the consultant is saying. So what we did was we shortlisted Conley, Perkong, Tagas Madhu, and we asked them to proceed to the next round of tender where we give them full access to all the consultants, talk to all of them, 14 days, delivered back with the revised costing. The revised costing that came in, Conley dropped at 72, Perkong went up to 53, Tagas Madhu dropped to 62, I Gateway at 43. But the I Gateway, we had a bit of a problem. The 43 that they came back, number one, I Gateway did not have financing secure. It was not enough. It did not show that they had financing secure for 43. And uh, based on our conversation with the consultants, it's not should be in this range. So, looks like they missed out a big chunk of the MNE costing. So, we have eliminated them out. We have selected the 1, 2, 3. And based on the final offer, the lowest here is the customer at 62.5. This 62.5 is purely for construction cost only. It's TCC to finish it. These are the, I'm sure you know most of them here. These are the existing uh, consultants involved in the project. The architect this project is architect Aki Prima. ME consultant is JPK Associates. CNS is JPC Snamraha. Surveyor Juruko Kamucha. Landscape contractor design in. These five are the previous uh, companies, uh, consultants involved in issuing out asserts where you reach up to 70%. So they were actively involved in our due diligence exercise and our tender process because the architect and this guy, ME, has the most amount of value of balance work. Most of the value of the balance work sits with. Okay, the most of the work construction sits inside here. This is a lot of uh, cost not done yet. So this guy, we needed him to verify all the tenders. Is this correct? Is there anything they missed out? Uh, we don't have any hiccups. So these guys have been actively involved with us. Okay, now we move on to the proposed contractor. So uh, after all this uh, negotiation, discussion, multiple rounds, we have proposed to UOB, which they have given us a green light, to appoint the customer in Nebraha. So basically, Conley was uh, 72, Percon was 73, the customer revised it to 62, and this one we are not taking into account because they didn't have a financing secure. Uh, final offer submitted and Percon were substantially higher. Costing submitted by IBA was the lowest. Take into account two components of completion MNE was not in there, and ID was not in there. Uh, based on these decisions, Tegas Madhu was uh, selected as the proposed appointed contractor to revive the project. Okay, uh, this is cost to complete. So, what I explained earlier, the 62 million is purely for TCC. So, what we intend to do here upon getting blessing from the bank is not just to complete the project, is to reach up to strata. Then, after strata application, UOB will remove us as receivers and managers. This has been agreed upon also. At least you have no headache with BHL already, it's up to strata. After that, it's BHL's problem. So, this is what we're going to show to you on the cost. The costing by Tukas Madhu 62 is only to complete the construction. Then we have done check-ins. 
there is amount need to be paid to the bank. There's IWK contribution fees. We have legal fees for scrutiny fees. This is in respect to section 366 of the scheme. If we move forward with the scheme, there is a cost which need to be borne, which is a preparation of the scheme, filing to court, preparing the ES, and the lawyers are, uh, the lawyers are there, you can check with them. Uh, payment for subdivision, this also, in the last meeting when I presented, we didn't have the exact figure. We have got the exact figure now from the land survey on this. Strata, other development costs as variation required by authorities. Then the total other development costs we have estimated to be 28.2 million, which is substantial amount since with the redemption. This is the main main angle. Uh, so looking back at the company from the day we took control of BHL, the BHL's bank account are zero, except the HDA account has 200,000 secured by the ministry. So that is the only fund BHL has. We have also done checking whether there's any other assets outside of the mark where we can liquidate and throw the money into here. BHL has no other assets. The only asset is the mark. So looking at the current position, uh, after analyzing all this costing, we are, we are unable to finish it without a top up for the purchases to complete this project. So technically the scheme is a scheme done by the receivers together with the purchases support of the bank. It's called a self-rescue scheme. It's no white night. We don't sell the building out. We do it with the purchases. That's how the top up comes into play. Okay, breakdown of the cost. Cost to complete by Tegas Madhu, 62. We have placed a contingency of 1.5%. Other development costs which I ran through. I will give you a full breakdown of this in the next slide. Uh, and also the breakdown of this. Uh, this is based on our duty. Balance to be collected from your banks. Uh, I think most of your buildings are standing in. Some of the 60, got 80, got 70. It's subjective. Lah. So this is what has come back to us about 48 million. 56 units. Estimated price is 20 million if you realize it. This figure is an analysis based on uh, transacted units. We use the average applied back to the 56 unit based on the breakdowns you saw. So if we take this into the calculation, our inflow is only this, our outflow is this. We are short by 23.2 million to finish the project. We have applied this 23 to your total net area of the mark and the top up per square feet that we have proposed is 55 ringgit per square feet. This is the top up figure that we are proposing. Okay, this is a summary breakdown of the gas Madhu's construction cost. Prelim 4.6, main buildings work 17.2, MNE 17.5, infra 6.5, ID 9.7, consultant, uh, architect, MNE, CNS, landscape 3.8, contribution to Shabazz, TNB and Bomber. This one uh, is subject to us. When we go advanced, we'll probably ask for a waiver, we'll try to speak to them and drop down the price. But for this exercise, this is the estimated amount based on our conversation with the consultants. So this could vary slightly, contribution. We can go on the ground, we've done it before, abandoned project, purchases are coming in, can you just give us a bit of waiver on this? Okay, so this is the gas reduce costing, TCC. The 28 million estimated outstanding amount due to UOB, 24. Uh, under a legal position, I, I have to be very clear about this, if the company goes into liquidation, then every single debt freezes on the day. If the company is not under, you can verify it now, if the company is not in the liquidation, any bank can continue charging interest. So, estimated amount, if we finish this project in 12 months time, this would be the amount which is due to UOB based on principal and interest. Subdivision of master title, uh, this is accurate. Statutory fees and land surveyor fee. We have the figures already. Scrutinary fee, we are estimating 300,000. Contribution fees for Interwater Consortium is 1% of total sales. The total sales is standing about 170 million as of today. So that gives you a 28. These are your other development costs. Okay. If we apply the 45 ringgit back to the type of units here. So you have apartments, office suites, shop lots. 
an average apartment with a size of 618 square feet will pay 33.9 thousand. An 833 square feet apartment will pay 45. These figures are calculated based on your square feet over 45. So the short walk, which is the largest, 1,780 square feet will be paying about 98,000. These are the top up sums. Okay, um, this is just for everyone's info. We did, a, it's not a comprehensive study, but an analysis over 10 kilometer radius of properties. But you gotta bear in mind, the max infra and the max common facilities is a lot more advanced than all this. So, average selling price for the mark is between 485 ringgit to 715 ringgit per square feet. If you add the 55 top up, you are in the range of uh, 540 to 770. This is the uh, estimated square feet price after you be finished. Uh, sorry, in the top up. So you have new city. The uh, development is not as advanced as this. This one, the common areas, the finishing one is a lot more better. They are slightly higher than you guys after the top up, 3.7. Green Residence, 16, Jupion, 48, minus, Seville, 7.1, Traders Garden. Uh, but bear in mind, not all of them has the commercial office and shop lots. Huh? So your common areas are a lot more advanced than all of them. This is just for your info. These are the comparison we have done. Okay, finishings. These are either in your SPA, we have seen all the 65% of SPAs that we have reviewed. We confirm that everyone has a furnishing, uh, sorry, a furnishing agreement entered in with the company binding. Either it's in your SPA or it's a subsequent letter issued by the company. So a 618 square feet is supposed to get all this. A 833 square feet is supposed to get all this. 1166 square feet is supposed to get all this. Okay. Thank you. No problem. Send the copy to you. Okay, and then uh, another type. 1166, you have this. So the, the ID package is not consistent. It seems to vary with everyone. So it's a, it's a bit of an issue for us. So, but uh, the game plan here is not to depart away from your SPA. It takes away the headache. So we just strictly follow the SPA and follow the development order. That's it. Okay, this is the important part. I know the 55 was the important part, but this is very, very important. This is our proposed salient terms, the basic minimum salient terms that we're going to have on how do we deal with the 55, on what is required of the purchaser for the scheme. So you have uh, this scheme. Under section 366, I would need 75% in value voting in favor during the upcoming meeting. And then you have category. If you want to be a participating purchaser, participating purchaser, you have to agree to the scheme whereby the payment, the 55, what we are asking, 10% of the top up sum is to be paid 90 days from the day, the court gives me the court order that I can revive. 10%, that's it. This 10% is kept with the receiver's escrow account and this money will not be paid to the contractor or consultants. It's kept with us as an escrow account. Balance 90% of your 35 ringgit is to be paid 30 days after we give you vacant possession. This is what we're proposing. So it's 10 and 90. This takes away the risk of contracts are collapsing, project abandoned, so the money is still safe if it fails. Uh, but uh, Takas Kudu has showed us uh, financing, full financing, and we have already contacted the bank. The bank is comfortable with them and will grant them the financing to fully fund this project. So that is a plus point there. Lah. The only issue would be delay. Lah. But the scheme-wise is 10 and 90, what we are proposing. These are for part purchasers who say, I won't in favour. Okay, then you have non-participating purchases. Under non-participating purchases, you have a couple of categories. One is, I don't want my unit anymore, just give me back my money. That is one. These purchases are categorized as 
voluntary termination. If you want to have a voluntary termination under the law, 30 working days from the day we give you the court order that we want to start the project, you write in to us and tell us I don't want this unit anymore, return back the money to us. That's one, voluntary termination. Then you have not voluntary termination. Purchasers who voted in favour, fail to pay the 10%, fail to pay the 90%, Fail to pay the outstanding progress billing. These are a couple of categories because I think uh, you have cash buyers. So cash buyers, we want to make sure that whatever you have held back and not paid to the company, you have to release back to us. And then uh, failure to pay the future progress billing. Progress billing is, uh, I'm sure because it's abandoned, some of you would have given instruction to the banks to stop all payments. So we will notify the banks, we will be a liaison to your end financiers. With a court order, we will tell them the project is commencing. Please release according, according to the CERT. So this is the involuntary, this is voluntary termination. So how do we deal with the purchasers who are non-participating? Voluntary, I don't want my unit, give me back my money. One, they breach the 10%, 90% or they don't pay the progress billing. What we intend to do is, uh, upon completion, the company, or in this case the receivers and managers, will be refunding 100% of the monies received by the company pursuant to your SPA. So what your bank has released, you'll pay off the bank. Uh, if you pay 10%, 20%, we'll pay you back. This is pursuant to your letter undertaking given by you to your banks. What we don't pay exclusive is interest that you've paid to the finances. So in terms of principal, full refund, everything back. Payable and timing. Okay, so we have, uh, what we intend to do is Either we start, if the scheme passes through, we will try to dispose the 56, uh, sorry, the, if you come back voluntarily and say, I don't want to participate, this unit will go into our unsold units. So we will try to dispose them quickly. Uh, but quickly is going to be a challenge because no one is going to buy it without the project being completed. That is our challenge. So the faster the contractor finishes, he will finish it. So once he finishes it, we will do a bulk sale or a tender and dispose of all these units. But very important for us to establish that the, the selling, sorry, the purchase of this unsold unit must be sufficient to pay you back. So if we round do the tender and the amount we are getting is uh, for sale, it's not enough to pay you back, we can't dispose it, we'll hold it first until we can reach a quantum where it's enough to pay back this 100% to your end finances and to your deposit. So timeline we wouldn't be able to advise is based on our experience normally these things all will only start moving, interest will come in after people see vacant possession has been granted. Until then, very difficult for us to speak to buyers. We did explore at this stage to try to sell the units quickly, raise cash, we can put it into the top up. But um, parties who came in are not willing to come in without construction commencing. So this is how we deal with purchasers who don't want the unit. Okay, that is the mechanism for the 10 and the 90. Then the salient terms, these are the key salient terms. If you have placed caveats or any form of encumbrance on your unit, you are required to remove it. Uh, this only happens if the scheme passes. If the scheme doesn't pass, then your KPS will still remain there, no issue. Number two, no claims against the company or RNM, including LAD. We don't allow, we know that you guys um, are entitled for LAD under the law, but you cannot use your LAD to knock off the top up sum. We don't allow. Because the top up sum is important for us to finish the project. That amount is calculated again. So this one is your baby on this. But BHL Gamilang is not wound up yet by law. It is under receivers and managers. So your claims by law, your LED, you can always file back to BHL Gamilang. That legal position still exists. It doesn't run away. What we are trying to say is you're waiving your rights over the LED where you cannot use it to offset top up sum, progress billing, progress payment. So you can't go back and say that you know, I'm owed 54,000 your square feet is 33, so I'm going to net it off. You can't, because we need the money to finish it. This is very important. And uh, we're going to put a clause in there where uh, the purchasers in passing the scheme gives us consent to amend the DO building plans, variation of the layout, finishes and services of the property. We only apply this term normally for units which has uh, furnishings. Why we say that is, uh, for instance, uh, what is been built there, your tile color could have run, your color of your cabinet could have run, so we need to make sure that uh,
this is allowed. So if we can't find the same type, we are allowed to do modification in terms of giving a slightly different color, maybe a bit yellowish or whatever. So this is there. And statutory requirements. Maybe uh, MPHA will walk in. For CF purpose, they need us to do something else, which is uh, out of the development order. Maybe the company did not finish something or something which was not fulfilled to the authorities. We are required to do, and that requires to amend the development order. We have to do it for CF purpose. Uh, but rest assured, if there are changes to your layout, which we don't foresee, because we've seen all the units, the purchaser will be notified black and white. So we'll write to you and say, these are the changes. So you'll be, it's not something that you get your key that it, it looks different. Okay. Uh, we have, uh, so your contractual agreement is for the company to finish an X amount of date. In the court order, we will mention that from the day we, uh, we commence, 12 months is the new construction period. Um, you can comfortably say like in 12 months, it should come with CF already. Should. And then, uh, what we are proposing, this will be imposed on the contractor, 12 months DLP. So that is binding also. So the contractor, the customer will be giving 12 months of DLP. I think your SPA says uh, 18, I think. Something like that. So, bear in mind, uh, the new contractor or whoever it is who comes in, he's going to undertake defects done by the previous contractor, which is very advanced. So, 12 months we think is a fair period. So, his purchases being uh, uh, a bit more aggressive, go and check the units. If there's a defect, highlight quickly in satellite. So, this covers the binding. So, the defect period is still there. 12 months are complete. The scheme under the law requires 75% of total value of creditors present and voting. So whoever shows up here, present and voting, we need 75% of total value. In that meeting, we will have a scrutinizer, an independent third party which will count your votes, very often the receivers will not get involved and they will make the announcement. And then uh, that information will come out in their report, will be given to our lawyers, they will then notify the court, then the court will give us an order and say the scheme is passed. That's the Basic process. Timeline. Uh, based on our feeder today, uh, the forms that you have, if you feel that uh, purchasers are keen to get back the unit through the scheme, and we are confident that the scheme can go through, we have to apply to court. The lawyers will file an application and tell that we want to comment something called a court convening meeting. Uh, this depends how fast the lawyer work and the availability of the judges. Normally, it's within one to two months to get a date. So the court order will say you can do this purchaser meeting on this day. That's how this will happen. We have to prepare something that Mr. Andrew said, an explanatory statement. This is under section 367 of the Act. This document will say the do and the don'ts, your top up sum, defect liability period, how you pay, how we treat, and other terms and conditions. But generally what you have seen here is exactly going to be apple to apple inside there. But now with the committee in there, when we do the scheme paper, obviously we will share with them and see whether anything they need to add or whatever not. So we will be sharing with a new team, right? Yeah. Court convening meeting is in a day. Uh, it takes us one month to prepare this ES. It's not an easy document, it's actually a booklet. And then we have to dispatch this and give you guys 21 days notice. But feel free, if this thing goes on, within 21 days, you can have a group coming over to the office. If you don't understand the terms, we are happy to share all the information and clarify certain things if you want. Submission of court, one to two months. If the scheme passes, we will submit to a court to with the lawyers. That takes about one to two months. Uh, once the court order comes out, you'll be duly notified. That's when your top up sum kicks in, your 10%. And the construction period is estimated at 12 months. Uh, in terms of physical, uh, hand over site possession to the appointed contractor one month from court approval. Completion is 12 months. Uh, please take note that uh, Tegas Malu has been given access, but not a full access to the site. They've been given access to the consultants to do all the groundwork, paperwork, and speak to MPAG, speak to the ministry. So they are really doing that part already now. This uh, is just to share what we have done, uh, either as a liquidator, receiver, yeah, there's two things. So the current one that we're doing now is an access ground. Cheras, and um, these are basically just for info. We'll just share everything. This is uh, all these are done through the same scheme, but every scheme is different based on the project status. So 
Uh, this is one, this one and this guy, Access Crown and the Mark is the one that we are actually exploring 10 and 90. And the purchasers, uh, the contractor that comes in shows us financing upfront. So there's no headache. We'll share this with the committee, you can have a look at it. So we have instructed our solicitors to prepare the submission paper. Uh, we need to move fast on this project. I need to stress this up because uh, insurance cost is there. Every day we are incurring safety guard costs. So all these costs, the banks are paying. Their redemption sum will be higher if we don't hand over site possession to the contractor. Because once site possession is given, the site is his responsibility, all costs is his, he's captured already. There's no more breakage. So, uh, finalization, uh, finalization of the ES, which is the court doc, court convening meeting within 180 days. Notice this will be sent. This is our game plan. Okay, corporate profile, whatever we extracted from uh, Tegas Malu, just to share with you guys. Incorporated 26 March 1991 under Companies Act, uh, 28 years of experience uh, based on their profile. Total value completed is about 687 million. Currently, they have about 280 million uh, worth of projects in hand. So these guys do construction, condos, roads, bridges, so everything. These are the prominent projects they've done. 11 storey residential apartment, 6.3, Pasimas, 200 million, Pasimas, 15 million, Kajang, Green Park, 880 million, 33 storey service apartment, this one is ongoing, 189 million. These are the profiles that we can extract. CIDE license for the customer do. Yep, that is the sale term, proposed payment, and uh, the current status. <coughs> we can open the floor for questions here. So I do need to uh, go back to the slide of this, uh, I think uh, the presentation the purchaser. There's a slide of the uh, total unit have been committed for the so-called declaration of the uh, For information, my name is Paul. Um, I'm being uh, you'd like to represent your uh, last meeting, last week. Actually, some most of you are not uh, around, so we were there, so we cannot contact you. But some of them, they are here. So, I just want to introduce them again. Uh, we have seven committee members here. Later on, I will get all your contact number. I will create or I mean, add yours into the group chat. So, in future, any information latest, uh, or, or, or some uh, updates, we will just let you know about, uh, about it through group chat. Is it okay for yours? This one? Okay, yes. This is the communication with purchasers because I will, just how you go through, and time you go through, the short lot here is uh, 18 unit, and you say total purchase will have been completed, that means one is the uh, unsold, right? So, and this. I have to do the calculation compared, uh, compared to the other slide who have the estimation of unsold unit on the calculation of the uh, is only 22, uh, sorry, 20 million if I'm not mistaken. Uh, 20. 20 million, which we think that this question has been popped up from the last meeting and we uh, found that the value are totally too low for that. For the 16 office, they is unsold. And the one short lot is unsold, and also the block A and block B, I don't think they are all is uh, unsold unit is uh, studio. I think it's some of them are not studio, they are bigger unit. Because from 56 divided by uh, 20 million divided by 56, that means it equal to only 357,000 per unit, which is too low for the estimate figures. You understand what I mean? You want me to explain in Cantonese? Actually, we want to get unsold unit high in some local unit in my area. So we've been including office to my shop lot. 
。所以如果我哋頭先誒 Professor Hudson 嘅 Professor 俾我哋睇嘅 Unsolved Unit Estimate figure 係二十個 million 啫，所以啲二十個 million 如果 divide by fifty six 咧，每個 unit 係三百五十七千 ，which is too low。which is too low， 或者上一次阿 Mr. Andrew 都有解釋過，佢講 because 我哋嗰啲誒 unit because 我哋會誒 partial 會攞嚟 control the gas module，am I correct？But if you say partial also is far below the 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 so called the 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 price the selling price，so which we are big question mark on this， 誒。Maybe you can just let us know how to calculate on that, then we come back to another question. Yeah, we will, <coughs> we, we will show you. Uh, during the last meeting, this was raised, so we have gone back and done the analysis. So it's all presented here. So, uh, all thanks for the question. Uh, zooming slow, so smaller bit. Okay, if you see um, the average price for transacted units that you have bought ranges between 477 655. So, the average selling price for block A is 372,000. This is based on the 65% that we have checked. So, what is being contra? to the contractor as construction cost. For block A, it's lower by 15%. We have to capture a lower amount in order for them to accept these contract units. We can't give them at the market rate. Then block B, your average selling price is 394. So this block B uh, could be later SPAs, could have more finishing. So your block Bs, even though the sizes are the same, the selling price has been higher on an average. And then uh, this is the average selling price, 400. Then what is the contra amount? It's 314. Office suites, anything more than 1,000 square feet is 381. Contra is 328. Anything, sorry, anything lower than 1,000. Anything more than 1,000? 961, 68. So the part where they lose up is the bigger square feet. Bigger square feet, you can't do anything. So this is. This is how we arrive to that 20,000 based on transacted SPD. Sorry, 20 million. But the, the important thing is also the top up. Oh, yeah. And this calculation here, Tagas Madhu will not be getting it without the top up. The, the units that we contract to them will be the selling price plus the 45 rupee because it's a top order. Every unit requires a top up, so they will absorb the top up. That means the uh, unsold unit there will be included top up. We won't bear for the unsold unit of no, top up value. No, cannot. Because the court order says every unit top up. Because we are quite confused for the last meeting, that's why we are having this question to ask today. Yeah. And uh, furthermore, that uh, we do have another question is the architect and the so called your professional team. Uh, still, you, we are still using like the uh, the assisting team, right? Yes. Which we are uh, we are lack of confidence with those. Uh, sorry to say that these are the majority comment from our house owner meeting last week. We are really lack of uh, confidence with this uh, architect. M and E is still okay because I haven't touched anything yet. But for the architect, we are really lack of the uh, computer with that. Can we uh, ask for cha changing the uh, architect firm instead of using that architect Agrippima? Because uh, we, we do request uh, the so-called uh, opinion from uh, HBA Dr. Chai 
And according to them, they are giving you the advice is we do have the right to change it when we feel uncomfortable or we are lack of confidence with the architect firm. Let him say to address the name. Actually, the architect is actually the most important person in, in all the development. Uh, as you have seen some of the photos, uh, the structure is very advanced. Um, the issue is, even if we terminate him, I think terminating him is easy. The, the problem will be to appoint a new architect. Because the new architect would have to certify that this building, which they were not involved from day one, to, to give the certification and to give that, you know, it approves and it pass all the various requirements. Um, and the plan is currently with the architect. Uh, to be really honest, the the company owes him close to two million, right? Three million. And if if we don't reuse back his service, he has a lien over the drawings. Uh, and he will he can demand that the three million be paid before he released the drawings. So you've got two problems. One is the drawings. Second is whether another architect would be willing to take over and sign. Um, I'm not sure if there any engineers or architect here. Uh, if you are, I think uh, probably you can speak up as well. Because we have asked, we've done many projects. Uh, no architect is willing to sign for someone else's work, regardless how good or how bad they are. Just for the question is why we want to do, we feel uncomfortable with this architect is based on what we have been paid through our bank, we only already paid for 80% of our loan of the total total agree, agree amount. But unfortunately, if, if it's uh, according to the architect, it's supposed to be the structure can, or the house or the structure can be at least complete 80%, then only our bank will release the 80% of the uh, amount. But unfortunately, for the first slide also, we see that we have go to the so called the site to go to the site. We see we have found that actual complete for the mark at this moment is less than eighty percent. It's only seventy percent or less. Okay, according to what I know, I'm not a professional as architect, but we know that it's only seventy percent and below. And that's why some of us would think that if. Just to say, if we want to ask for your help, as you're, 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 you're the one who are taking over as an RNM, so we want to know, because with this kind of unsincere, or say, say uh, the, I, I, I can't use the word cheating, but I don't know what is going on inside BHL with the architect that can sign the document to, re to ask our bank to release the 80% of our loan. This is why we urge to uh, uh, we will propose to change the architect. I know that there's a lot of uh, terms and conditions or also a lot of things are included, but we're still keeping using them just because they don't want to release the, 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 the documents or whatever printing. So it's unfair to us, we are feel uncomfortable at all. I think to give the purchasers some comfort, um, I think this was also raised many times by the purchaser. We have also uh, went and checked did some background search and so on. The, I think the, the complaint is quite a general one. Um, the issue with this project is that the, the certification actually starts the lowest at 60, I think 55 or 60%. The highest being I think about 80. So you are right. Um, but from our checking, the 80s are not that many. And the 80% certification are usually the lower units. Uh, and if you have been to the site, the lower units, including the ID, is already done. Uh, we have been into two floors already, right? Oh, yeah. So the lower units are actually done. To be, to be quite frank, the lower units actually, I mean, if they see it, they can move in already. It's, it's all there already, um, including the furniture, the curtain, and everything. Of course, now we have some issue because some needs to be replaced. Some of the curtains are already faded, and so on and so forth. But the eighty percent one, I think, relates mainly to the low to So it is, uh, it is, it is not so fair to say that you know everyone is being charged the eighty percent. Okay? No, 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 I don't agree. Uh,
Yeah, okay. I mean, we can check that. I mean, individual units, if you want, I, I can't answer now. I don't know which floor is that. But uh, they are quite advanced stage of uh, uh, competition. So, yeah, that's if, why we, if we want to check unit by unit, we can. But, you know. Yeah, just, just, just why we want to change it. I just, I do just nothing against yours, just to say we, we, we don't trust this architect. That's why we, we urge you to, to help to see whether any way to replace it or, or else to have a better guide on them instead of just uh, just letting them do whatever they want. So what has happened now is that we have actually put all the consultants, including the architect, under the uh, the employment or the so-called appointment of the contractor. Um, at the same time, we will also be engaging uh, when the project starts, we will have our own uh, BQ uh, to be appointed to look at the project as well. And we will also have a um, uh, that, uh, project. project manager uh, to to help us monitor as well. So these are all in plan. Uh, but the good thing is, from now on, the consultants will be under the appointment of the uh, contractor, um, and he will have to bear for whatever fees that they they, they want to charge him. So the I think the other good thing is, from now onwards, despite whatever. Um, uh, uh, the, uh, whatever hardship that you face or whatever um, your unhappiness with the architect I think this will be resolved because at the end of the day uh, I think the purchasers will no longer have to fund this project while it is under construction so it's only funded once it's completed uh, and we will understand the, 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 the sentiment about the architect about this but the problem for us is where do we find the first three million to pay this guy off and then get the drawings and then start all over again. And then where do we find an architect who is willing to take on, on someone's project? So this is our biggest uh, dilemma. Um, it's not that it cannot be done, it can be done, but it will take time. And whether we want, whether the time, uh, you know, whether we can really live with that. So, you know, to look for new architects, for the new architect to study, maybe take another two months, so these are all considerations that we need to give. But it's all been mitigated. The mitigating factor is you will not be paying for them anymore until you get your money. So there's no progress healing and so on. You pay, whatever you pay is in our escrow account. If the, the project abandoned again, you don't lose your money, you lose time only. The escrow account will be refunded. The 90% you haven't paid. So I think we have to look at ways to mitigate the situation rather than, you know, uh, you know, kicking people out is easy, but getting new people to come in is difficult. Mr. Andrew, my name is Miss Wu. I um, actually have a question to refer back to just now you mentioned, you said, Ferry Hoxton will have your own uh, BQ and also project manager to monitor the entire project and development, right? So can I have, like, what is your plan like? Uh, will you communicate with all the producers who's here? You will have the money update on the exact progress of whichever format you have. So our, our practice is we give monthly updates. Uh, for those that have seen some of our other projects, I don't know whether you've uh, seen our project, we have monthly updates. In fact, our construction updates are quite uh, quite detailed. I don't know if you bring any of our sample. Yeah. So for the ones that we're doing, what we do is, uh, like what Andrew said, the consultants are under the main home. We will have our project manager. Then when the QS certifies his figures, the project manager will verify whether these jobs are done and whether the amount is correct as per the work. This is our job. So the project manager is paid by us. That is not in this calculation. So the bank funds it. So that's the check and balance. Uh, for projects under us, we require a 14 days, every 14 days uh, a meeting where all the consultants sit with a timeline. In that meeting, uh, we, Ferry Oxen's experience, we will be heavily involved in it with the timeline and make sure the contract is following and what he has built is done. So engagement of Ferry Oxen representatives in the construction is very heavy. So the contractor is required to prepare us something called a, 14, a fortnightly site meeting report which says what he is supposed to do, this is projected timeline and where he is. 
for the current one that we're doing Access Prom, if you speak to the purchasers, every month they receive a circular from us, having a snapshot of what is done, what is not done, what are the issues we are facing, authority, so we'll give an elaborate one. Every uh, a month you'll receive one, once a kilo. Yes, so the letter comes not from the contractor, it comes from the receivers directly. So we are not going to send you the booklet, we will dis uh, decipher the thing, put in the key information because the booklet does not only says construction. We may have issues with Bomber, uh, IWK, which are extra things we, which will update or will definitely update. And then for instance, like I said, changes, variation, we can't find the same colour, all this you will get. So it's a monthly update. So it's at the beginning of the month? Yeah. Uh, Depends on the meeting, lah. But you will receive very prompt circulars. Okay, uh, I would like to make an update. The, we do have a meeting, as you know. We do have a meeting last Sunday with about around 170 unit owners attend for the meeting. And we do have a common agreement on we got to top up the uh, so called. Uh, Scheme, the, not based on your scheme of agreement, not your SO, SOA yet. So that's why, we want, uh, that's why we want you to, can you just, uh, Guma, can you just show us the, uh, the uh, calculation of the uh, 55 ringgit per, per unit? For the unit, right? Uh, per square feet, sorry. Yes, uh, oh, oh, well, no, the one, the, the major one? No, the previous, the, the first one. It, yes. Okay, according to the 62 million here, uh, how much can you let, just now you have show, but is it include the interior design cost inside? Yes. Okay, so as, as what we have seen, the interior work is 65, uh, sorry, 6.5 million. No, uh, interior design is about 10 million. 10 million. Good, because uh, if majority of the attendance of the meeting, they are proposed Ferrahaxen to withdraw the interior design. So to give back, the, the use the money to dim down the money of these 55 ringgit. This is the number one that we wanted to do because some of the, as you said, you might need some more extra money to, to fix it. Some of it cannot be used already. You have to replace it or whatever you call it, you got to redo it. So why not we just take off the... Uh, of course, you can put at the SOA, either everybody here have to be agreed. So we take out the uh, in ID, the interior design, then I think we would... This will be one of the way to dim down the cost of the primary. Is it everybody agree with this point here? Any questions? Or you still want your interior design? I think, uh, can, I, can I just maybe address this issue? Um, the sorry, sorry. Uh, so, sorry, I actually to uh, add on, not add on, uh, just to emphasize again on the top up that actually the Jason, uh, what we are actually want. We are looking at if we take out the ID from the total uh, so called development fee, how's the top up figure will be like? So, in, I mean that at the moment there is no decision to say yes or no, we will, we will actually want to have ID or not have ID. I think to be fair to everyone of us, right, it will be like for very Hobson to propose to say that that would be the cost without the ID. This is the cost with the ID. And with and without the ID, how the top up sum would be like to persuade them? So, in order for us to make a decision. Okay, okay working out the, the number is very easy. I think if you want, you can work it in your head. You, you are taking away 10 million, so your top up is 10 million less. So divided by the 4, 4 2 whatever square feet, you are looking at $33 or $30. Dollars. So let's put it up there. We, we, we are not trying to hide anything. You guys are smart people, you can do the max. It's about $33, I think. Yeah. $30 compared to $55. Right. So it, it's there. But I think the critical issue is this um, some units are advanced, so do we take those away if we don't want? And taking away things is not as easy as well. Can you show them the slide? So these are some of the units that has been done. Throwing things out also costs money. So we we have yesterday, well, because I knew this is gonna come out, so yesterday I we had a lunch with the contractor just to find out roughly how much. Of course, contractor being contractor, they will say you know roughly about the same. So you are not saving the whole nine million. 
The problem with taking things out cabinets, I have to repair back the hole. If I take out the aircon, I have to repair all the structure. I have to relay new cables for you.